Hello, good morning and welcome to St Catherine by the Sea, Holworth, for morning prayer on Saturday the 2nd of February. Using the Epiphany Order, which can be found at the beginning of the Red Book, if that's where you're following. <coughs> after prayer during the day, morning and evening prayer, ordinary time the seasons, and after Advent Christmas you'll find Epiphany, morning prayer. And it's also Candle Mass, or the Presentation of Christ in the Temple, and I suspect there's more information about that further on in the book under the list of feasts and festivals. Lord, we'll open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your light springs up for the righteous, and all the peoples have seen your glory. Blessed are you, Sovereign God, King of the nations, to you be praise and glory forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. As the sun of righteousness dawns in our hearts, anoint our lips with the seal of your spirit, that we may witness to your gospel and sing your praise in all the earth. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. A song of joy. O be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And so we turn to the Psalter at the back of the Red Book, or scrolling down or across our apps, and the appointed psalmody this morning, numbers 48 and 146. 48 and 146. We open and close each with a refrain, saying the glory be before we repeat. Repeat it and um, use the prayers that follow each psalm in silence, if we have them. Psalms 48 and 146. We have waited on your loving kindness, O God. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised in the city of our God. His holy mountain is fair and lifted high, the joy of all the earth. On Mount Zion, the divine dwelling place, stands the city of the great king. In her palaces God has shown himself to be a sure refuge. For behold, the kings of the earth assembled and swept forward together. They saw and were dumbfounded. Dismayed they fled in terror. Trembling seized them there. They writhed like a woman in labour, as when the east wind shatters the ships of Tarshish. As we had heard, so we have seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, the city of our God. God has established her forever. We have waited on your loving kindness, O God, in the midst of your people. As with your name, O God, so your praise reaches to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is full of justice. Let Mount Zion rejoice and the daughters of Judah be glad because of your judgments, O Lord. Walk about Zion and go round about her, count all her towers, consider well her bulwarks, pass through her citadel. 
that you may tell those who come after that such is our God forever and ever. It is he that shall be our guide forevermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We have waited on your loving kindness, O God. The Lord shall reign for ever. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, will I praise the Lord. As long as I have any being, I will sing praises to my God. Put not your trust in princes, nor in any human power, for there is no help in them. When their breath goes forth, they return to the earth. On that day all their thoughts perish. Happy are those who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps his promise for ever, who gives justice to those that suffer wrong and bread to those who hunger. The Lord looses those that are bound. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. <coughs> the Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the stranger in the land. He upholds the orphan and widow. But the way of the wicked he turns upside down. The Lord shall reign forever. O God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord shall reign forever. So to the canticle, and I'm afraid I'm unable to give you direction to it. It doesn't look to me like it's the usual one for epiphany, but if you man manage to find the presentation of Christ in the temple or candle mass as the festival, and then you should find direction there <coughs> if it doesn't have its own canticle. However, we turn now to the canticle. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. Thus says God who created the heavens, who fashioned the earth and all that dwells in it, who gives breath to the people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, and I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the captives from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name, my glory I give to no other. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. <coughs> This day marks the completion of 40 days since the birth of Jesus when Mary and Joseph took the child to the temple in Jerusalem. The requirement in Levitical law was for Mary to be cleansed, the completion of her purification following the birth of a male child. Until that day she could touch no holy thing nor enter the sanctuary. Yet on seeing the holy family, Simeon praised God and acclaimed the infant as the light to enlighten the Gentiles. And the prophet Anna gave thanks and proclaimed him her redeemer. The image of Christ as the light has led to the celebration of light countering darkness with candles often taking a central place in the observance of this festival. 
<coughs> so our first Bible reading, Exodus 13, chapter 13 of Exodus, verses 1 to 16. The Lord said to Moses, Consecrate to me all the firstborn, whatever is the first to open the womb among the Israelites of human beings and animals is mine. Moses said to the people, Remember this day on which you came out of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, because the Lord brought you out from there by strength of hand. No leavened bread shall be eaten. Today in the month of Abib you are going out when the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Hivites and the Jebusites, which he swore to your ancestors to give you, a land flowing with milk and honey. You shall keep this observance in this month. For seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. And on the seventh day there shall be a festival to the Lord. Unleavened bread shall be eaten for seven days. No leavened bread shall be seen in your possession, and no leaven shall be seen among you in all your territory. You shall tell your children on that day, it is because of what the Lord did for me when I came out of Egypt. It shall serve for you as a sign on your hand and as a reminder on your forehead, so that the teaching of the Lord may be on your lips. For with a strong hand the Lord brought you out from Egypt. You shall keep this ordinance at its proper time from year to year. When the Lord has brought you into the land of the Canaanites, as he swore to you and to your ancestors and has given it to you, you shall set apart to the Lord all that op first opens the womb. All the firstborn of your livestock that are male shall be the Lord's, but every firstborn donkey you shall redeem with a sheep. <coughs> if you do not redeem it, it, you must break its neck. Every firstborn male among your children you shall redeem. When in the future your child asks you what does this mean, you shall answer, by strength of hand, the Lord brought us out of Egypt from the house of slavery. When Pharaoh stubbornly refused to let us go, the, the Lord killed all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the human firstborn to the firstborn of animals. Therefore I sacrifice to the Lord every male that first opens the womb. But every firstborn of my sons I will redeem. <coughs> it shall serve as a sign on your hand and an emblem on your forehead that by, the strength, by strength of hand the Lord brought us out of Egypt. So I think the reason why this passage has been chosen for today can be found in the first lines. The Lord said to Moses, consecrate to me your firstborn, both of human and animal. <coughs> and uh, that's because the firstborn was killed in the Passover. And uh, that is effectively what we are told here. But if you don't redeem the animal, you must kill it. <coughs> it doesn't say what we should do if we don't redeem the firstborn. But uh, as we just read in that uh, explanation today, that wasn't, well, according to the writer of that piece, that isn't what was happening when um, Jesus was presented at the temple. It was Mary being purified, which may have been a part of it. But I tend to think of it, however accurately or inaccurately, as circumcision or the equivalent of a sort of christening or baptism, a birth rite of passage, if you like, maybe with a different meaning perhaps to the families that present than to um, the faith that provides the ceremony in some cases. But it's interesting that this is God's people coming out of Egypt. <coughs> and of course, um, God in Jesus came out of Egypt with the Holy Family, returning to Canaan, though it wasn't called that then, after they had hidden from Herod's murder of the slaughter of the innocents. I'm not quite sure what a sign on your hand and an emblem on your forehead means in relation to killing the firstborn. Maybe it's just a way of saying by doing it and thinking it, you understand that uh, I, the Lord, redeemed your firstborn. <clears throat> and of course, Jesus is the firstborn to Mary, traditionally conceived by the Spirit of God. So therefore, not his earthly father, Joseph's progeny. So to Romans 12, our second reading, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 5. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. 
Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what his is, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are all we are members of one another. So it seems to me there are four instructions in these <coughs> two short paragraphs. <coughs> we are to consider ourselves as living sacrifices before God being transformed by the renewing of our minds, which is an interesting idea. So the way we think about God, about creation, humanity, ourselves, community, ourselves, is uh, the starting point of the transformation of the world the, in Breaking the breaking in the establishment, the setting up of God's kingdom starts with us thinking differently in a way that links to God, the source, the inspiration, the idea in Genesis being physically spoken by Jesus using the puff, the breath, the presence, the essence that is the spirit. Then we are instructed, or the people being written to, the Romans, Gentile background believers, being exhorted in the faith of Jesus, <coughs> that they must think of themselves with sober judgments. This is a development or another idea within the panoply of transformation of the mind. We must not think of ourselves more highly than we ought. That interesting line, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned, which may be another way of saying in relation to our calling, we must judge ourselves in relation to our calling. It doesn't say there, don't judge yourself against anybody else, but against your calling. And that may be a sensible interpretation given the next idea. The reason why we must judge ourselves according to the measure of faith that God has given us because we all have different functions and jobs and so we can only work as the body of Christ and individually as we recognise our place in that community. And so back to morning prayer in Epiphany season for the Responsory. We worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations that the Lord is king. We worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tell out his salvation from day to day. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. We worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. And once again, I'm afraid I'm not able to furnish you with the location of the refrain, but if you found Candle Mass, Presentation of Christ in the Temple in your Red Book, or maybe it's already presented in your app as it is with me, <coughs> but if you found your way in the Red Book to the presentation, you'll either be on that page or you'll find direction to it. Otherwise, join in at Blessed Be, as we say, the Song of Zechariah. The parents of Jesus marvelled at what was said about him, and Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, 
free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The parents of Jesus marvelled at what was said about him, and Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Let us pray. <coughs> And so as we, at least in terms of morning and evening prayer here in the Benefice, consider this to be Candle Mass as we have transferred it to Sunday for our major services. We thank you that you are the light of the world. We thank you that you came to be born among us. We thank you that the light has dawned on those who lived in the land of the shadow of death. We thank you that your light has dawned in our hearts and that we may carry that light. And we thank you for the light and hope that children bring. And we pray for those who have had or are expecting children. whether through birth or adoption, those for whom that experience has been good on balance and good-bad, grievous. And we thank you for all involved in helping people prepare for and continuing to look after the care Continue in with the care of children. Our maternity units in hospitals, social workers. Pray that we as community would be prepared to put our hands in our pockets and provide sufficient resource. That situations don't need to get so bad that both children and family are damaged before it's possible to intervene, <coughs> even at a supporting level. So often now the social workers have to go with police and remove the child because they haven't been able to help earlier as they simply don't have the time. Caseloads are so small and the thresholds are so high. Pray too for teachers as they look after children and engage families and support families in appropriate care, direction, instruction and discipline. From Operation World we are still dealing with continents having dealt with global themes and answers to prayer in Europe. It's written by evangelicals and so they're particularly pleased that evangelicals are growing in strength. <coughs> and numbers even within or across denominations. There are patterns of worship, mission, action, which are cut across previous boundaries which is seen, I would say, quite rightly as a good thing. Prayer movements have developed, Global Day of Prayer, Boiler Rooms 24-7. The European Evangelical Alliance and other initiatives <coughs> are supporting church across the continent and across denominations. Well, those organisations, not necessarily, but there are others that do believe us join across confessional, national and ethnic boundaries <clears throat> and there is a positive impact of immigrant believers across the continent. And yet there are still restive ethnic enclaves, very good set of words there that they have coined, that 
potentially threaten stability. We pray for peace in the island of Ireland, north and south, particularly as difficulties not of their making have been generated by the decision of uh, our government to uphold what could be regarded as a flawed referendum process. So we pray for peace in that land and for the ordinary people in Kosovo, Basque, Catalonians, Denistas in sorry, Basques in Catalonia, I think. No, there are two regions, Basque in Catalonia. Denista in Moldova, Abkhazia, South Ossetia, Northern Cyprus. And the Hungarian Albanian minorities in several Central European and Balkan countries. And the large Muslim minority in France. We pray that all these people have recourse to diplomatic opportunities to establish these things that they would seek to have for themselves in community in relation to the other communities amongst whom or adjacent to whom they live. So from Christian Action Research and Education concluded week on mental health, we remember young people with eating disorders, and they self harm and others suffering with depression and other mental health issues. Pray God will reveal his healing, redeeming love and rescue them through the skill and compassion of health professionals, counsellors, family and friends. And pray that youngsters will be discovered, moved to seek help, supported by peers, <coughs> and that their contact with family and professional help will all be positive and supportive in moving them towards the right outcome. And we pray that all interactions, however well intentioned, will actually work to that end of healing and wholeness and the recognition of re-establishment of self-worth. <coughs> we pray again that there will be adequate funding to provide enough care and support for these. We pray for teaching, training and prevention too as people help people understand one of the main drivers for these issues, aside from problems at home, <coughs> is the uh, use of the internet as people present themselves falsely or otherwise and uh, bully and intimidate others. We pray that people, young people, will learn, and old indeed, how to avoid as far as possible those desperate negatives of social media. And I haven't yet turned the page for the February prayer guide, so <coughs> uh, I will use Thursday 31st, which I haven't used. There is a meeting in Tunbridge Wells called Faith, Hope and Action in a Changing Climate. Well, there was on Friday. We thank you for that. People who put it together, those that attended, and we pray that they will be encouraged and enabled and uh, be able to speak to people perhaps as they meet tomorrow for worship to share that encouragement and hope and joy and the direction and thoughts that they picked up at that event. <coughs> And in our benefit cycle, we pray, pray for the Friends of Watercombe Churches. And we pray for the events that they have planned. And we thank you for their support in all the community aspects of what church mean in this place. And we thank you for our church membership today for the second half of those in the village of Ermoyne, in which St Catherine's Chapel actually finds itself. These days, for Anne, Cyril and Cynthia, Carol and Jack, Lisa and Jack, Dulcie, Beth and Alex, Celia and Jeff, John, Keith and Anne, Chris, Kathleen, Elizabeth, Michael, Leslie, Kevin, Peter, Liz, Noel and Alison, Graham, Suzanne, Laura, Tessa, Pat, Richard, Liz, Tony. <coughs> we thank you for each of these and all they bring in their time, talents, money, faith, effort to their community and church. 
Pray for those whom life is difficult that they will call on you. Find the support that they need from family, friends, and neighbours, volunteers, and professionals. We pray that you would act in your sovereign grace <coughs> and make yourself present and known to them, and that they will attribute any response and improvement to your action and will speak of you favourably for themselves and to family, friends, and neighbours. We pray for those whom life is going well, that they may be moved towards you in gratitude, <coughs> recognising your provision. And as part of that reflection, support those in need near and far. Pray for your health, well, prosperity, your salvation, healing and deliverance on these. And pray that with them you draw us into fuller experience and understanding of faith. As we pray, serve and study. We pray that we will be seen to be and known to be you, we will seem to be and known to be our motivation and our inspiration, our light, our direction. And we pray that for these. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever living God, clothed in a majesty whose beloved Son was this day presented in the temple in substance of our flesh, grant that we may be presented to you with pure and clean hearts. By your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Believing the promises of God as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In Christ who sends us to the nations, give us the power of his spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.